This is a small experiment I've been thinking about. Uh, kind of inspired by something uh, something done by a guy called Daniel Stenberg, the uh, the maintainer of uh, the Curl project. He's got this thing where he it's called the Daniel Weekly, uh, where he each week or thereabout um, talks about what he's been doing lately, what's been happening in the Curl project, upcoming stuff, and general things that are interesting in that context. And I, I think that's pretty cool. Um, so I, I thought I'd do something similar to, um, for me, for the Sync Thing, uh, for the Sync Thing project. So I don't know if this is going to be weekly or bi-weekly or monthly, or if I get bored and this turns out not to be fun and this is the only instance of it ever. Um, so that kind of depends on, depends on feedback and depends on, depends on how this goes. So anyway, it might be, it might be nice. Going back to, um, or going to the actual subject of, of sync thing, we just released uh, version 0 0.11.24 containing just one bug fix and two, two small tweaks. Uh, very small release as we're mostly working on uh, the 0 0.12 release which is upcoming soon. And 0 0.11 is kind of on, kind of on live support in the meantime. So a bug fix, a couple of small tweaks. And the bug fixes, the bug that was fixed is about handling in case insensitive ignores, which is kind of a special case that you run into on, ran into specifically on Mac and Windows. Um, that's been solved. The tweaks are a bit interesting actually. One of them was about hashing performance, uh, and the other one, what was it about? Yeah, uh, the free space checking stuff that we recently added. So, so both of these are a bit interesting because they're kind of subjective in how you want them to behave and what we've been tweaking is is mostly the, the default. So I mean looking back at the um, at the hashing performance thing, so we did an optimization now, that's, that's what I'm calling it anyway. Um, and this is something that you in general want to go as fast as possible. But exactly how you make it go as fast as possible is very dependent on what kind of system you're running on. Optimizing it for uh, for a server with lots of disks and the CPU running lots of other processes apart from sync thing as well. That's that's one kind of optimization. Optimizing it for a desktop system where you have a single disk, <coughs> uh, which is slow and nasty com in comparison to the server setup, but you have a CPU which is kind of disproportionately fast and dedicated to the task. Uh, that that's a entirely different optimization. So what we're changing the defaults to now is basically a switch back to what sync thing was like in version 0 0.8 or something. Um, because it, we basically started out desktop optimized, twisted to server optimized along the way, and then we're back now in, uh, in a desktop optimization mode for, for the cases where we detect that we're running on Windows or Mac, uh, which I think is probably a good trade-off. And you might think this is not a big big deal at all, because this is basically just a default value. Um, there's a config you can tweak, it's the called number of hashers, and you set that and you can get the beha whatever behavior you like. But this is also something that we don't really want our users to have to care about or understand. Um, there's been, I mean, during the discussions on what the, what the correct default value is, there's been suggestions that, okay, but you could just have a slider in the GUI and, and so on, right? But the thing is that the last thing I want Sync thing to do is start up first time for a new user and start having uh, this whole discussion with the user about IO parallelization and CPU core prioritization and so on because because that sucks and that's stuff that, that you should, users really shouldn't have to care about. It should just work for, for, the, for the vast majority. And the ones who are special cases probably know about it and can fix it, fix it themselves. Uh, so that's that. The free space check is kind of sim a similar thing. We introduced it a while back and basically what it does is that when we're downloading, pulling files to, to a folder, we try to make sure that we're not filling the disk by stopping the, um, the sync operation at, by default, 99% full disk. Um, so I mean this seems, seems reasonable to me because I'm kind of used to s enterprise and server storage solutions and if I see a volume with more than 75-80% usage, that's a horrible situation because then you start running into uh, various kinds of fragmentation and contention and, and other kind of issues, right? So you don't usually run volumes more full than that. 
And same thing if you have an SSD, for example. You don't really want to run it full because then there's no space for the garbage collector to work. So you really need to give your volumes a little bit of free space to breathe. Or so I think. But other people obviously like to run their disks like 99.7% full and our default of complaining of stopping sync at 99% kind of killed that. Uh, so the tweak we've down, now done is that we've added the ability to actually set the free space percentage in fractions of a percent. So you can now configure your system to say that okay I only want to um, reserves or I'll, I'll, I consider it fine up until the point that it's 99.9% .9 full or 99.99% full and we should have some auto detection around that as well. So it's a silly thing and it's kind of just a minor default value but when you run into this limit then you don't really understand why because you think hey I have lots of free space um, it gets really annoying so that's that stuff we're fixing. So that's what we've done in, uh, in the 0 0.11 release so far. So most of the development work at the moment is focused on the uh, upcoming 0 0.12 release. We've already added some, some pretty cool stuff. There's, uh, there's a lot more coming and uh, we're kind of at the moment kind of collecting, uh, collecting breaking changes so that we can fit as much, much stuff as possible into the 0 0.12 release without making it, pushing it too far in the future or making it too, uh, too scarily big. So the big one that we've already put in there is, uh, is connection relaying. This is all work by uh, Audrius, by the way, so props to him for putting that together. Um, so connection relaying. Basically today, if you have two devices and they're both behind some NAT router or firewall, and you can't or won't add the required port forwards on at least one side, then those devices can't connect to each other at all, ever. But with connection relaying, they can instead talk to each other via a, a third-party server somewhere outside on the internet. And that's pretty neat. Um, the connection is still encrypted in exactly the same way, end-to-end, device-to-device certificates and verifications and, and so on. So it doesn't change anything at all in the, in the, security, um, in the security of the system. So we have a couple of public relay servers up already. Um, so the in so it actually works as it is right now. If you download the master branch of the code, it will use a relay if necessary. So it will just work out of the box when you download the uh, or when you install the 0 0.12 release. It will work out of the box. If you can get a direct connection, it will use it. If it can't, it will use a relay and then try again to establish a direct connection uh, in, in the background. So the main disadvantage, of course, of going via a relayed connection is that the performance is going to be a lot worse than a direct one. Not only will the um, relay service have rate limits imposed on them to kind of force fair usage, but also you might be sending your data around the world and back just to get to a device on the other side of the street because we don't have that many relays and they're not geographically distributed yet. Um, they may be in the future. We're working on uh, on a on a way where you can just start up your own relay and have it added to the public server pool so that other users can use it. And there's already a detection in place that we use, try to use a relay that is close to you and not one that is on the other side of the world if, if possible. Uh, but even in the meantime you can actually configure the system to use your own relay. So you can set up a private relay only for your own devices or if you're a company you can set up a private relay that's just for your users within the enterprise and so on. So that, that's kind of neat as well. Um, so this stuff isn't fully baked yet. There may be some um, uh, some protocol changes, and uh, not everything is committed to master yet, and so on. Uh, but it's uh, but it, but it's coming in there. So that that's the, that's the main thing in uh, in Serial 12. Other stuff that might make it in the future is uh, delta indexes, and that's something I'll probably talk about some other time. Um, about what it is and why it's been tricky and why we don't have it yet because that's that's kind of interesting. Um, I know Audrius is, is working on something to be able to send temp indexes for temporary files which is sounds very technical but really what it's about is that at the moment you can't synchronize files, you can't download files from another device until that device has the entire file. Which is fine if you have, if it's just lots of small files then this is not an issue. 
but if you're uploading, say, um, a large virtual machine image, then it would be useful to be able to download pieces of that file from other devices as soon as they have those pieces, not necessarily wait until the full file has been synced over. So that's something Otis is working on. It's uh, It'll be pretty cool if it works, but it will probably be a protocol change as well. So either it will make it into 0 0.12 or possibly a future 0 0.13 or something. So we'll see how that goes. So I think I'll just close it off here for today. Um, there's That was a little bit about the previous release, a little bit about the upcoming one, and a little bit about what we've been what we've been working on. So I'll post this on on YouTube, where else, and link to it from the forum. And uh, I guess if you liked, if you liked it, hit like on the forum. Um, I'll use that as the main interest gauge. Thank you.